guys and welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name's Max, I'm the host over here at this channel and a massive thank you to my patrons. I'm going to be on the road for the next few videos because I'm providing a bit of exclusive coverage of the Black Ferns vs Wallaroos and their Laurie O'Reilly Cup Test Match. But speaking of Australia, talk of their World Cup campaign after losing to Wales and Fiji, it hasn't exactly died down. So here with my new mic, I'm going to introduce you guys to the Rugby Connection podcast where I had a discussion with Cam and Murray, the hosts, about everything wrong with Australia. Without further ado, let's roll the rest of the podcast, which I will link in the description. But, and here's a question for you, is what the fuck happened to the, the Wallabies? I've uh, got an epic rant that I've been saving for this. It, I've been waiting for this. Go on. I want to hear it. Start off about sacking Eddie Jones. That's not going to change anything. Sure, they shouldn't have hired him. They should not have hired him. But it's not going to change anything sacking him right now. These issues that Australia have have transcended coaches. Michael Checker's Wallabies were one of the most thuggish teams I've ever seen. Dave Rennie's Wallabies were even worse. Last year, they were both the most carded international team and the most penalised international team after being the most penalised team in the 2021 Rugby Championship, after Lachlan Swinson was red-carded in 2020. This ill-discipline is a result of Super Rugby not having the same laws as the rest of the world. We have a 20-minute red card. We have golden point. We don't allow the nine to tackle the other nine when a scrum's on. <laughs> Super Rugby teams don't learn how to close out games under pressure. And they don't feel the pressure of having to keep their discipline. Australia don't have any discipline because they don't get it in force at a young age. If it's happening across three head coaches, then, bro, Wales attempted to kick seven out of the eight penalty goals that were offered to them, and six of those seven attempts went over. That's why the margin was absolutely huge for Wales, 40 points to six. I mean, I've been on in my video about how much improving Wales have done, how they avoided a strike, what, six months ago. But Australia, stop seeking the short-term sugar hits. The reason that they hired Dave Rennie is because they're like, oh, Kiwis win all the time. We want to be like the Kiwis. We want to learn. Dave Rennie didn't grow up in Australia. He doesn't understand these boys in the way they grew up. He can't relate to their upbringings. It's bad enough that he's one of the older coaches going around in the scene as well. Australia, with all this need for the short-term sugar hits, they're just not thinking long-term. Hamish McLennan, who's the current CEO of Rugby Australia, is probably the first one that's trying to think long-term that we've seen for probably two decades or so. At least he signed Eddie Jones to 2027. At least he secured the 2027 Rugby World Cup. But Eddie Jones was... Sorry there, sorry there guys. I'm just going to restart that. Dave Rennie got sacked for the same reason he was hired, for the short-term sugar rush. All of this could have been avoided if they hired Dan McKellar in the first place. Dan McKellar was succeeding with the Brumbies. He was actually just carrying Australia in Super Rugby. He's still in his 40s right now as we speak. Imagine what he could have done at eight years at the helm, similar to what Gatlin and his dynasty has done. If they had a um, Dan McKellar dynasty in the same way Wales had a Warren Gatlin dynasty, things would be looking far better for the Wallabies right now. But instead you had Dave Rennie, who didn't have a clue who was picking at fullback. He knocked Lola Seal's confidence all the time. He started Jake Gordon at nine for crying out loud. Um, Dave Rennie did not have a clue what he was doing, but sacking him was just as bad as hiring him. Australia, quite simply, are in a deep hole that they're never going to get out of unless they have a miracle happen and win both the Lions Tour and the 2027 World Cup. If they don't win in 2027, rugby in Australia is dead forever. Eddie Jones is probably going to resign, I would say, based on the rumours for Japan and everything. But going out, trying to say Eddie Jones bad, blah, 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 it's just not going to paper over all the huge earthquake-sized cracks that Australia have right now. Rand done. But yeah, suck oh. Eddie Jones. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I have to agree because you look at you look at Australia right now and rugby union, it has turned into a fringe sport. You know, yeah, the, the, the fan base for Rugby Union 
and the attendances to to the Aussie franchises in Super Rugby is at an all time low. People just aren't interested in the product anymore because there's no results coming in. And, and that's the result of all the short term sugar hits. They're just thirsty for exactly. You know, and I think Dave Rennie probably got away with a few wins here and there. He got a few wins against the South Africans, uh, wins against Argentina here and there. But ultimately, I think you've hit the nail, nail, uh, nail on the head there. But yeah, so I think it's, it's just... all Eddie's fault. That's what he said. It's, it's all Eddie's fault. No, but the thing is, before before we went into this World Cup, I I I praised <laughs> Eddie. I, fell for it. I praised I praised Eddie Jones. For for picking a team of youth, for for trying to bring something something new to to Australian rugby, and individually, <laughs> there's such great talent in that in that Aussie team. But it's come back, bitten him in the ass. He doesn't have uh he doesn't have any players who have that proper Test match experience, have that proper World Cup experience. That's where you could be saying now, okay, maybe leaving out a Michael Hooper, maybe leaving out a Bernard Foley, a Quay Cooper, Pete Samu. Maybe it wasn't the best idea in the world. Mm. But yeah, I think there's a lot of work for for Aussie rugby. And it's a shame because especially, you know, growing up remembering the Aussie teams that I used to watch. Yeah. Krieger, absolute, you know, Orwell, Quay Cooper, Stephen Larkham. Exactly. And it's a shame. It's... <laughs> Yes. Oh my god. But you know, it's you know. it's gonna take a miracle for Australia to make the quarterfinals. It's gonna take the likes of Georgia and Portugal beating Fiji, which is not, not gonna happen. <laughs> not happen. It's not gonna happen. Um, Australia. Yeah, you, no, it's it's tough. You and, do you know what's even more disappointing for me on a personal standpoint? Murray, I've said a podcast with you before, but I, I do have plans to move out to Australia for <laughs> Uh, at least a year um and yeah, obviously being a big cool. rugby fan myself uh, i don't think i'm gonna have any friends to talk about rugby with because it seems like nobody cares anymore i don't care <laughs> they're they're beating beating i'm really gonna to have to start watching some rugby league <laughs> do you know what's actually more worrying what's what? that pros are should probably listen a lot more david campisi said this to us on the interview go and check it out i'm clicking our own show but yeah um, David Campisi said that nobody cares about Australia. Like he went and co- coached like children, like primary school level, and they asked, "Who's your favorite?" He asked, "Who's your favorite Wallaby?" And they couldn't name a Wallaby. Yeah, that's mad. That's meant exactly. that on the for a nation who's won two World Cups. You know that's yeah, yeah. that's it's rough. Weird. It's really bizarre. But just sticking on the Australia thing because that's the big one this week. Two points. Is Eddie Jones going back to Australia? Uh, back to Australia. Back to Japan. And did we see Bernard Foley's tweet saying it didn't have to be this way? I did. I did say, and it <laughs> didn't have to be that way. Uh, but ultimately, do I think? Right. I've I've had some time to think about it properly. Would okay. the with the inclusion of a Michael Hooper, a Quade Cooper, someone like a Pete Samu, a Bernard Foley? Would it mean that Australia would be making the quarterfinals? Maybe. Would it mean they win the World Cup? No. I think Australia's been Australia's form's been up and down, well, down for a long time. I mean, Christ, they lost for the first time to Italy in, in the um in the autumn. They got absolutely troused by South Africa, absolutely troused by New Zealand, um, got beaten by New Zealand's B team, uh, granted a closer game, but you know, yeah, they got beat by Argentina at home. I don't think these players ultimately are going to fix it. Maybe mm, get no. them to a quarterfinal, mm. but really, it's not going to solve anything, is it? There's some I even... Sorry, dude. No, I'd say there's one. Yeah, I, don't I, was know. Say that... I was just going to say that before we get on to the next topic with Murray, um, that Murray's got in mind there, I think I genuinely think that if Michael Hooper played, it would have been even worse. The fact that they started two blindside flankers was to try and solve the discipline they had at the breakdown. Because in Australia, they don't understand that playing open side flanker doesn't it means that you don't have to steal the ball every phase. You, you get what I mean, eh? Like, yeah, yeah. open side flanker doesn't mean you get to every single breakdown, steal the ball at every single phase. The fact that Hooper has done that in his entire career, that's why there are always gigantic holes in the Australian defence. 
because he doesn't know when and when not to compete for the ball. Fraser McCrite, he grew up watching Hooper and he grew up watching David Pocock. And so he's learned that same habit by watching them as a teenager. They dropped Fraser McCrite to the bench because they knew that Tom Hooper and um, Rob Leota, Leota more of a carrier, Hooper, um, probably that lock six cover that would be in most teams, they don't have that same instinct to get over at every phase because it's their role to be a fringe guard for a ruck, for example, at Super Rugby. They'll stand at the line and they'll kind of decide when and where not to compete. But because the pressure was so hard for them, they just kind of fell back into that habit of McCrite because they're like, oh my goodness, we're behind. What would Michael Hooper do? We've got and to get what the Michael Hooper would do is wrong. That's why Michael Hooper is the most yellow carded player in Test history. If Dave Rennie and Michael Hooper were still in charge, things would have been even worse. So, so, Don't want Mark Marks. What the hell? I think it's <laughs> interesting to say that, but for, you know, yeah, it it, just, it goes to show that Australian rugby has. I think we we've talked so much lately about um, the uh, English rugby, Welsh rugby being in trouble, Premiership teams dying, the Welsh rugby in terms of uh, finances players not being played, strikes being in crisis. But if you look deeper at it, I think I think Aussie rugby is in the deepest hole of them all. No question about it. Because because you go to England, you go to Wales, the you know, the the day-to-day basis, the people still love the rugby. They they they're proud of the team. They watch, they tune in. Australia the majority of the Aussies, you know, they, they don't they don't care anymore. 